towards the end of last week's Torah portion, we read, and I quote the text, Isaac and Ishmael buried Abraham in the cave of Machpelah. After years of strife and rivalry, Abraham's sons managed to set aside their grudges to honor their father. The story of our forebears reveals dysfunctional families it started with Abraham and Sarah's siblings, and it continues this week with Jacob and Esau, who are described by the Torah as agitated in the mother's womb. We read, the Eternal said to Rebecca, two peoples are in your womb, and two nations shall be separated from your innards. One nation will prevail over the other nation, and the elder shall serve the younger. Why is it so? Is it some source of curse that befalls human families that never will achieve peace? Is it a way to tell us that frictions and discords are the natural order for us humans? What is Torah trying to tell us here? As you know, Judaism is a rather pragmatic religious tradition. Our main source, the five first books of the Bible, talk about human, human relationships not in an idealistic manner, but as they are, as we are, flawed and yet capable of grandeur, prone to do bad things and yet creative and capable of love. When Rebecca feels the twins fighting in her womb, she cries out, why is this happening to me? And she went on inquiring the Eternal, who pronounced this famous sentence, Two peoples are in your womb. So why was she crying out? Was she in pain? Or was she foreseeing the subsequent conflicts between the two brothers? It was probably a bit of both. Two peoples fighting in one womb is a perfect image to describe our societies. The world is no better, no worse than it was in the past. And the Marxist read the infighting as class struggles. Before that, during the French Revolution, the division of society in three orders was called into question. Two conflicting ideas of, of what America represents are currently battling in the US. And the examples of divisions and conflicts are many. We could also add Israel and the division between religious and secular Ashkenazi, Sephardi, etc., etc. And yet, in order to function as a group or a society, we need a unifying principle, a set of ideas around which most people can rally. There is a, today a great danger for humankind, that is, to see our differences as a threat, as a source of conflict, rather than using them as a way to enrich ourselves and humanity. The British Jewish community has lost very recently one of its major voices, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. He was a prolific writer, a rabbi able to see beyond divisions what makes us all part of the same body, of the same humanity. In a recent interview, Rabbi Sachs summarized the tension between a particular identity and the universality of our humanity in a very simple and yet profound way. He said, by being only what I can be, I give humanity only what I can give. It is my uniqueness that allows me to contribute something unique to the universal heritage of humankind, end of quote. It is important for us to remember and also to tell others that we shouldn't feel threatened by a different opinion. It only enriches us. I hope you are all coping well during this second lockdown. Use it as an opportunity to think about your unique contribution to humanity. And when you feel lonely in your homes, close your eyes and think about your neighbors, about your friends and your community about all these people who are also alone in their homes and connect with them. No man is an island, said once John Doan, and we build bridges to reach out to each other. I'm looking forward to seeing you on Shabbat.